Take it. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, Meet the Global Leader uh, session 16. And I hope uh, you all are doing very well. And today we have an amazing guest. Uh, her name is Lucia. She is from uh, Spain. And she is uh, currently teaching uh, qualitative research in university in Barcelona. And she, is a, she has experience in uh, strategy and innovative management consultancy. She has experience in digital transformation. She has also uh, ex experience uh, in growth strategy. Most of that uh, to help some businesses and service and uh, technology industry to grow. So uh, welcome, uh, Lucia, to our session. And thank you so much uh, for giving your precious time uh, with us. Can you please oh. introduce yourself? Yes, hello, how are you? I'm happy to be here. And well, as you said, you know, I, I work in mainly focusing in strategy development, business, um, business development and innovation, and also in with people, you know, with entrepreneurs uh, themselves. So they could develop themselves, you know, and apply, you know, their potential and all their ideas into practice and create, you know, successful businesses. <laughs> I teach in the University of Barcelona. I worked at Accenture for many years. I also worked, uh, um, I work also as an independent consultant for firms like Ogilvy and Matters and other kind of organizations. So, and I also have been working, helping, you know, organizations that help, are designed to help entrepreneurs, you know, to launch their business and succeed. They are called business incubators. I've been doing also. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> That's super amazing. And before going uh, further, I would like to uh, share uh, one of the objective and mission of uh, School of Intervention Development. Basically, you know, in Bangladesh, there are very few organizations who really work for entrepreneurs, who really uh, work for supporting them, assisting them in a more positive, impactful way. Yeah, it, it can, it, it, yeah, you can say it is related. It is almost zero. There is almost no organization that actually uh, uh, are working to help uh, entrepreneurs. So a school of entrepreneurship basically based on, you know, like uh, knowledge and we are working on that. Basically, you know, like we, uh, one of our mission is to, you know, empower uh, people for better Bangladesh. You know, like uh, we, if we want to empower young people, it, it should be the knowledge information, you know, these the, the tools that we are sharing with them. So, and uh, the objective of our uh, Meet the Global Leader program is to, you know, invite people who are doing some impactful work around the world to invite them and let them share their story and journey how they did it. Uh, so through their story and journey, our audience who are mostly university students, they basically know and learn uh, what people are doing around the world. So that's the objective and uh, through your uh, story and journey, I believe and we believe that uh, it is going to help some people in Bangladesh. Right. So, uh, so uh, can you please tell us about your university life? What you did uh, during your university? What did you study? And uh, did you uh, were you involved with some kind of like voluntary activities or part time jobs that helped you gain some skills? Well, when I was I studied in the university in Venezuela. And I studied business accounting and administration. And at that time, when I was starting at the university, there was this movement of, um, of it, it was the movement of total quality. You know, at, at that time, you know, what is important was about you know, reaching a, a high quality in everything we did. And I participated in different organizations, you know, that it was, they were created to help entrepreneurs to succeed. And, it, they were designed kind of, you know, what, what your organization is for, that is to provide information, you know, and new technologies and tools and procedures that entrepreneurs could take and learn. And at that moment, I realized, you know, that I was meant to be a consultant because I found quite interesting understanding, you know, how something could be done, you know, like open up, you know, my mind, the way, you know, in which things should be done. Because even at that time, <clears throat> um, some time ago when I was in the university, you know, I realized 
something that is very tangible today, that when you are in the university, you know, the university provides you with a basement, but you need to do research and you need to open yourself because the market usually is beyond the university. So it's like the university provides you with that kind of foundation, but then you have to learn and to be involved, you know, with other kind of organizations and people in you know, real life people. Because one thing is to learn something in a theoretical way, but another thing is to put it into practice. And the practice is more important. You know, practice is the experience, it's the basis out of which you will flourish. So it's important for every person who is going to be an entrepreneur to combine both things. And this is what I realized in the university. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't know. Would you like to talk a bit more about that? It's okay. It's up to you if you can share a bit more about how did you uh, imply, apply those uh, skills in your later uh, job or uh, whatever you did. Uh, like the skills that you, that you gain, how did you apply those? Well, when I, my first job was an Accenture. At that time, its name was Arthur Anderson, and it was one of the big five firms in, in business audit and consulting. And when I got there, I began working as an auditor. But then, you know, I decided to change from audit to business consultancy because I realized, you know, that you could be a good auditor and maybe a company, you know, might have a wonderful financial statement. but you know, their internal procedures and the way in which they were doing things was not prof profitable or was not as good as it should. So as a business consultant, I learned about what is called best practices. You know, this was something that was useful for me because in the university, I learned about, you know, managing, thinking about, you know, planning ahead the future. But then in the practice, when I was working at Accenture, uh, we learned I learned that uh, about a database that they had, which was called Global Best Practices. So it's better, you know, at that time, you know, I began, it began my interest in doing research because there, you know, we used to study and to share with different colleagues from, and from different parts of the world, you know, the best practices they found in different industries and how successful those businesses they were, you know, providing advice and consultancy to, you know, how this business could manage, you know, to apply this, how they help them, those business to apply those best practices and how they succeeded. So this is the same thing, you know, I was doing there. So I think the, um, I think the most important piece of advice is like theory is important, but it's very, very important to understand how to put it into practice. And you cannot learn how to put what you learn into practice unless, you know, you begin a business and to try, you know, to apply. And in that process, you know, your mind is going to come up with new ideas, new perspectives and new ways to see things. But of course, it's important to understand and learn you know, the best practices you can find in the market, you know, learn from people, from the experience of other people. And this is what I did in this job. And this is what I've been doing all my life, you know, trying to understand and to learn from the, from the experience of other people and then to try to apply it into my own circumstances. <laughs> Super. You know, the thing, uh, this is very important because there are some people who basically promote that you don't need to, study much you know basically they don't have the uh, they didn't have the opportunity to study that's why they are trying to promote uh, you don't need to study go and earn it you know so that's mm -hmm. the problem that thing that you mentioned is very important that people they should study you know like it's uh, there are so many stuff uh, online uh, websites uh, online you know like uh, tools who are offering free courses so people should study and they need to analyze it and they need to practice it in their practical life. Yeah, that's that's the very fantastic point you just shared. Because you know, most people say, "Oh, you want you have to be a dropout to be a successful," you know, businessman. You know, like people are trying to promote that, but that's a, a dangerous and suicidal uh, promotion. So what we try to do is, you know, like promote study, read, and try to gain as much as information as you can. So thank you so much for uh, pointing that point out. I think what is most important is that um, we need to know that information is not knowledge. 
you know, because sometimes people feel confused about this. Yes. Information is information. Knowledge is knowing how to use that information. information. But you need to go to the source of information. And I understand that maybe there are people who doesn't want to study because they believe, well, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time, you know, so many years at the university. But the thing is that, you know, when you go to study something, you're learning on the experience of other people because doing business is a science. You know, there are, it's a science that has two sides, your side, and you know the, the science of doing a business and promoting a business and creating a marketing campaign, but also has to do your side. How do you apply this knowledge? How successful you are in understanding this knowledge, and then you know applying it because knowledge is a way to create a shortcut. So you won't have to be you know wasting time, but learning out of the experience of other people, and then you can create your own experience and share it with other people. That's how knowledge is transferred. Exactly. And uh, well, uh, can you uh, share with us about what you are teaching right now uh, in, in the university? Well, um, one of the things that I'm teaching is uh, qualitative research for entrepreneurship and management and small and medium enterprises management. And one of the things I've been working with my students is because, you know, qualitative research, you know, you don't have to become a, a, a researcher. But isn't this important to understand, you know, the main principles of qualitative research? Qualitative research means, you know, that you want to understand the why of things. You know, qualitative research is like about measuring, you know, how many companies, you know, have been uh, launched this year. You know, this is something that you can um, measure. But the question, the real question is why? And I'm going to give you an example. You know, when like a like three years ago, I think, I studied, you know, I, I took a program at Google that has to do with uh, online marketing. And, and I attended a workshop um, launched by Google. And there, there was Google's vice president. And he's got, um, and maybe you guys can find it if you want, he's, he's, he's got um, a blog called Occam's Razor. And he said that for him, it was not important that somebody tell him, you know, the numbers. He said, you know, maybe if you have a website, if you have a company, you, you might wonder, you know, or you might know how many people, you know, are visiting your website, but then they are leaving. Or why so many people, you know, you might know how many people are getting to the sales chart but then they abandoned your sales chart. But he said, what is important for me is why. Why the people are doing that? How can I serve them better? You know, is my business idea a good idea or not? Is the way in which I'm offering my business good or not? So this is what the qualitative research um, process gives you. You know, it gives you information about why things are going on and also helps you to test you know, if your idea, your business idea, you know, is feasible or not. And also it helps you, you know, by doing this process, you can understand why you want to do this business and maybe discover something new. You know, it's like maybe you are trying to test an idea and then in the process you discover another thing you, that you didn't think about before and it's a much better business idea than the original one. So that's how you know this qualitative research can help you. You know, if you under, try to understand people, trying to understand why, try to test your own idea and try to see if, if maybe that business idea could be improved or even uh, changed to something else. You know what I mean? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, there is a, a, a um, and you can find it, you guys can find it on the internet. There was a guy whose name is Tom Chi, and he used to be in charge of the, um, the testing department of Google. And he made, he told us, you know, he had, a, he, he had this lecture in which he was saying that, you know, they were trying to test, to figure out how to create the Google Lens. And in the process of working, you know, trying to find, you know, to discover, you know, how to design a, a proper Google Lens. 
um, he found out that there was uh, that there was a very easy way, you know, to make lenses that you know they were not properly the Google lenses, but that he found that there was a way, and he discovered that if you have your lenses usually are standing here in your nose, but he discovered that if you put your your finger here, you know, you might have your lenses. Anyway, you know, you can see well, but the, the weight of it is not going to be in your nose. So he said, well, you can create something that help people who wear glasses just to have their glasses standing on their ears rather than their nose. So that could be a business. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so the more people go... Open. Huh? The more people go and explore ideas, they study, their customer, the market, and then, you know, like to predict the future needs, demands. So the more you re do the research, the more you can discover more things, the things that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. It may lead to a different uh, untapped market or, you know, the potential, um, you know, the, the product, the service may improve too. Yes, for instance, there is a company, a way of, of using, you know, for business qualitative research, there is a German company that they create, uh, they they have this um, this device, you know, to clean the floor, and they went to the, to the field because they wanted to see people how people use their drawers, you know, because they was you know to collect the dust, and they discovered by visiting people or their houses that there were many people who had allergy problems, and they never thought about that. And they discovered that, that for that people was difficult to use their product because they had allergy and there was a lot of dust when they were trying to clean up the dust. So they decided to create a special line, you know, for allergy people, you know, for allergic people. So it was an allergy safe, you know, um, drawer desi uh, design. And they were very successful in selling this product. So it's like, it's about discovering observing, getting involved, you know, because by you getting connected to the market, to the person, you know, you want to interact with, you can discover things you never, you didn't know before, and you can create something new. Absolutely, absolutely right. Uh, so in your experience, uh, so far, we believe that in your experience, uh, you've seen different startups, different business owners, uh, what do you think about, you know, the past, the initial struggles an entrepreneur basically face and how their journey goes by, you know, like uh, in the middle stage, uh, how they should do, and there are different kind of stages, you know, so how they uh, overcome the challenges in different stages from ideation to execution, particularly. Well, I think at the beginning it's difficult because um, you feel that maybe you you don't know if you have if your idea is good or not, and you don't know if you will have the resources, you know, to develop your idea or not. And and at first, you know, as entrepreneurs, we feel like you have to do so many things, and you don't know where to start. So one thing that I do with uh, that I did with myself, you know, that I've been doing with myself and actually with something else that I'm working on that I, I want to learn um, is, is that we have to, to know what is, you know, our what, because usually we tend about thinking of the business, you know, but we have to look at the, as, as to our business as a way of manifesting or putting into practice our true potential. You know, it's like usually we have we tend to think of our business as something outside of us. And we have we want to use our business as a means to achieve something. But it's the other way around. The business is a mean by you sharing with the world what you have inside yourself, your potential, your capacity to connect. So your entrepreneurship is a mean for you to flourish, to blossom. So if you look at your business in this way, you know, it's going to be different because it's not something outside that is going to be a burden that you need to carry on with it. 
it's the other way around. It's like from your point of view, you know, the person, the things, your ideas, the things you have to offer, you know, you're going to use an entrepreneurship project to share this with the world. So you're not going to make a living. I'm, you, you're not going to make um, a living, you're going to make a life. And this, you know, helps to release the tension, you know, and maybe at the beginning, you know, you might have to be working on two things. You know, maybe you have a job and you have to be in your job working to develop your own business. And this is the case for many people. Other people have the opportunity to, to have, you know, a loan to apply to get a loan or to or to find, you know, um, angel investors and they can develop their business. But, you know, we shouldn't be too worried about, you know, the present. Our eyes must be, you know, focused on the future. So, and understanding, you know, that, you know, we as entrepreneurs, although we see ourselves very little, you know, and that we don't have too much, you know, maybe help, you know, we have to do so many things. If we see it as a way, you know, that, you know, instead of seeing ourselves from this place of scarcity and seeing ourselves from a place of abundance, so we have something to share with the world, something that, so our entrepreneurship is going to bring forth this that we have to share. And I think that's the secret of success of many people like Apple, you know, and all those people, because that people were people who believe in themselves. So the first thing you have to do is like this guy from Amazon, you know, if you think about all these people, of course there is a science on how are you going to run your business so you will be successful because this is a science. And it's not only about having good ideas. It's about, you know, what I said before, you have to go to university and then you have to study to join groups and then to put into practice because, you know, it's not about having a good idea. It's about putting this idea into practice. But to put this idea into practice, the first step is that you think you can do so. You know, that you can, that you have something to share with people. And what you're going to do with your entrepreneurship project is to develop a mean to make this thing flourish, to share your idea with the world. And if you think about it, this is more or less what, for instance, these people at Microsoft said. You know, at Microsoft, they said, we want everybody to have a computer at their house. You know, he didn't say, I want to be a very rich man because I'm poor and I want to make a computer so I will make a lot of money. You know, it came as a result. So it doesn't mean that you don't have, you know, to to think about and to learn about digital marketing or learn about, you know, managing a business because this is very important. But the foundation of this is yourself. You know, this is what I think, you know, is very important and that help us, you know, to release the pressure. So it has to do with finding, you know, you as a person, who you are and what do you want to share? And then, you know, your why, why do you want to share this? And this is related to your business, what? To your business, why? You know, that has to do with the golden circle. But first you have to think of yourself because you are the soul of your business. You know, businesses have souls. And this is not a metaphysical idea. You know, it's like founders, you know, have their, leave their legacy. And then people, you know, like they join, you know, this, this legacy and expand it or sometimes reduce. It. So you have to think about this. You know, it's like thinking of your business and yourself, you know, as something organic. So it helps you, you know, to release the business. And then, you know, you will just have to find how are you going to do that? And by answering, you know, these simple questions, you know, and there are other questions, you know, that I add to the Gordon Circle, like, you know, where are you going to do this? Maybe you're going to do this in Bangladesh or maybe you want to do this to the world. For instance, one of my students, she wanted to do a research in China because uh, she was thinking about launching um, a um, design, you know, it, she wanted to launch an online business. And so she was interested in understanding, you know, if in her case, the Chinese government was, you know, helping female entrepreneurs. 
And also when she was doing that, she discovered, you know, that she wanted to know, you know, what made a woman become an online entrepreneur. And what she found out is that the Chinese government um, was helping a lot of women. And they were providing funds and resources and online teachings and so many things to help women to become entrepreneurs. And then, you know, she followed the life of four, uh, five girls who were um, designers and they were selling they, their products online. So by doing this research, you know, she understood much better the market. She realized, you know, that she had this opportunity to launch a business that she would like. She understood where she should launch that business because she realized that it was better, you know, to be in one part of China where the government was promoting more, you know, and giving more, more help to female entrepreneurs. And this, this research helped her to be in contact you know, with uh, people who were already, you know, launching a business. And now, you know, she's launching her project. So this is how I think, you know, we could manage that, transform something that we see as a threat into an opportunity. What do you think? <laughs> oh, that's really, really amazing. Uh, I was spellbounded. I was, I was uh, like listening to your speech. And it's mm -hmm. very much, you know, like relatable, you know, like which is uh, going on in our current world. You know, people are people have to do this kind of, uh, you know, like trial and error. This can be, you know, like before uh, execution, it can be used before uh, execution of the idea. You know, like whether the idea is feasible or not. So you are expert on digital transformation. Can you? Uh, Tell us the importance of digital transformation for a startup or an entrepreneur in short. Yeah, well, digital transformation, you know, it's a very long subject, you know, but I work with a company who were helper. Um, they designed a software that was uh, used. It was a digital signage software. And they also had, um, it was a kind of, they had some tools you know, to help them, uh, it was to do a kind of analysis of the audience of this digital signage service. So they had this software that there was a camera that counted on the people who was looking at the advertisements shown on the, um, on the screens. So it was wonderful for restaurants, for stores, for metro stations, for airports, for different things. So, uh, what the digital transformation had to do with this. If you were a company, you know, we're in a moment in life, you know, in which uh, we need to expand our services. So the technology, what helps you is, you know, to increase and to personalize the service you are providing to your customers. This is mainly, you know, what we want to do with technology. And by, for instance, in this case, by using a digital signage software, you know, and, you know, realizing if, if people looked at the advertisement you're placing on the screen or not, you know, you can tailor and change, you know, those advertisements according, you know, to their taste. Because that, I remember that the software and the camera helps you to realize if they were men and women, how many times they were looking at your advertisement or not. It's like in YouTube, you know? When you have something in YouTube, you have how many views, you know how many people have seen your, your advertising on your video, and, you know, and based on programmatic advertising, maybe you, you can also find out who was watching your video, you know, in some cases. So what is important is that you get this information, technology, remember, information is not knowledge. You get this information, technology helps you to gather information, but then you have to analyze that information. You know, this is what a data scientist does. And then, you know, to understanding, you know, and getting, gaining, gaining insights out of what you see, that is not only analyzing, it's just like using your whole brain. You know, it's like trying to get an insight out of what you're seeing. Then you can make informed business decisions better decision. So it's important to see how technology can help you to deliver your service or to gather information about your customers so you could provide a better better service or a better product for them. 
this is yeah. what i think. yeah that's yeah. exactly you are on point that's uh, fantastic and uh, you know you have been doing a lot of stuff you know uh, so what do you want to be in future what do you dream what do i want to do yeah in future i mean what is your dream what do you want to do in future you are thinking about well i'm thinking um i work also with people you know because i i work with people and entrepreneurs and i think uh something that i like and why i wanted to talk to you uh is because i want to focus on people you know more than companies i want to focus on people i work with people you know so they know how to apply you know because these principles could be applied to business but also could be applied to your life you know to your own life because you know your business is part of your life and businesses has to do also you know the way in which you launch a business and how do you relate to your business or so even to a job has to do with how much do you think you can get from life and how much do you think you can share with life so now i'm working with people it's like a kind of personal coaching or life coaching but i like to call it, to call it life entrepreneurship because i told you you know the, the most important project in your life is yourself so um i want to to launch um this service i mean this process already doing it but i want to launch it on social media so people will learn um to provide service to people so they could work with themselves you know of their life or they can we can work you know in developing a business you know how do you apply this knowledge to launching a business so this is what i mean to <laughs> wonderful wonderful uh, kind of related to our you know like objective our mission so in future we want to collaborate with you uh, we will yeah. discuss uh, further later on how we can you know collaborate and it make it available and useful for you know audience for the people and uh, that's it that's a very insightful and resourceful session uh, from lucia and thank you so much for that and uh, before going to end our session I, uh, there is an announcement for our audience uh, i would love to uh, hear it out from you so about the workshop yes um we were we we're talking about you know to apply these ideas you know we can do a workshop you know just to find you know your what your why and and you know to look at the future and see how you could apply this to your business and we're going to combine you know these tools we've been talking about something that has to do you know with the golden circle but also um some knowledge that we can gain you know from the um theory you from Otto Sharma from NIT University and also from another theory that it's called effectuation. Effectuation has to do with uh, research that uh, some that, that, that was done to understand how a steer entrepreneur managed to be so successful. So it's like how we can do apply this to ourselves to see when we launch a business. I think it could be it could take maybe one hour or maybe two based on you know on the audience and how many people want to participate and I'd be happy you know to be with you. We can have it maybe maybe next week or the week after on Monday if if it is okay for you or or Tuesday at this time. Excellent, excellent. And uh, that's a huge thank you. Uh, uh, to you and uh, dear audience it could be a life changing moment life changing workshop for you we will uh, school of entrepreneurship development will uh, share the processes and how to uh, register and we will uh, have a fantastic and fabulous workshop uh, from uh, miss lucia who is a very uh, expert uh, person on strategy and innovative management uh, digital transformation and also growth strategy and we will learn on how to find you know what and why so uh, that's it and before before ending our session i would like to share one thing with our audience mm -hmm. and basically uh, this is uh, from a quote just in summary which which means is if you hang around with six yeah, five uh, confident people you will be the number six if you hang around with uh, five intelligent people, you will be the number six. 
if you hang around with five idiot people who are idiots you'll be the number six so it's basically up to you whom you want to hang around with so always choose the positive person and if you want to be an entrepreneur hang around with people who have who are entrepreneurs so who has the mentality to be an entrepreneur find that group find that persons so it's totally up to you, if you, you whether you want to be an idiot or you want to be successful in your life so that's it and uh, thank you Lucy, again for your insightful session and we'll definitely have a workshop and uh, i believe and we believe from scd that our audience and members they will love to join and we will set the uh, date and time for the workshop and okay. that right. would be fabulous okay so well, the audience uh, with and if they have any questions you know just let me know okay we can answer i can answer okay uh, let me check uh, if, if there is any if there is any uh, questions uh, i will send it to you and or we can uh, share the comment if we find okay. any answer so I, I will send it to you and we will have it answered okay okay nice Great. to see you bye bye Great. thank you so thank much you have a good day okay bye <laughs>